love the Blue Dust Film Festival. For me, Emil and, and this team has such an amazing sensibility uh, in the way they, they put together the film and everything. So I'm, I'm really grateful for this film festival and to be here. And it was really nice to see the reaction last night uh, when we opened film festival uh, because I saw so many emotional faces. Uh, some really Bulgarian kids and young people come to me and speak to me. So it was really touching for me to see that because uh, you think you are different in a cultural way but through these movies and through these uh, places and um, exhibitions, you feel how connected you are with someone that you don't know in your whole life. So to see that in a person, in a very genuine way, was really touching for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to be here, that's why, you know. Uh, movie, it's your, uh, uh, your, your movie, Arada, it's your first feature film movie? Yeah, uh, it's my first feature film. And uh, it's a kind of a personal story? Yeah. Your personal story? It's, it's a very personal story. It's, it's actually my family story. The whole thing is based on. Uh, my brother was one of the first people in Turkey that released the punk record. And my father was also a singer in the 70s. He, had, he was uh, a singer that is becoming famous in his field. Uh, but then a coup happened, so he forced to join army. And, and when he returned back, at that time, you have to serve army for a long period when those, these kind of uh, coups or these kind of extraordinary things happen. And, and he forced to join in the army and stay there more than 15 months. So when he returned back, he found that he don't have a career anymore. Mm -hmm. So he will start to restart the whole thing again, but he couldn't because my brother was born. So he had to feed the family, you know, he was a father figure. And, and, but he was always saying, when I was even growing up, like I will return to music, but that they never came to him. And so, because of the DNA, I think, my brother grew up and basically he was into the music, but his field was a little bit different. He was into extreme musics, like punk, heavy metal, trash metal, and those kind of stuff. So, uh, I grew up seeing them have a cultural clash during the house all the time. So, uh, for me, it was also a touching, touching story but also very emotional, because it was very sad uh, when I was uh, growing up seeing my father and especially my brother always in fight with everyone around him, with his taste in music and with, with his, 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 his identity, you know? So in the movie there was a little brother, yeah. Ozan, and it's you. Uh, Ozan, the main character, is the leading actor and, and he has a brother, a little one. It's actually me. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, and uh, uh, the nineties uh, were the the boom of the punk music in Turkey, or psychedelic rock in Turkey, or, or it, it was even before. Psychedelic rock started in the seventies, especially, uh, and and Turkey was a very interesting place after the United States, because the psychedelic music started especially in the United States. Uh, Turkey was one of the only country in the whole world that re, uh, reformed the idea of psychedelic music. So it was very cultural. So it wasn't like a, a American version. Mm. It was a, um, they take the form and they put it their own identity in Turkey. So the 70s psychedelic rock in Turkey is a very characteristic music. Even right now in the United States, a lot of inspirational people are specifically into the 70s Turkish psychedelic music right now just because of this. Because the way they, they, they understand the form of the construction of the music was completely different. So, but the punk music in Turkey was, uh, there was no boom. It wasn't like that. It was just an underground, very underground, very niche. Like, I can literally say you that the music started between a hundred person, literally a hundred, and it, and then it grew to one thousand people. 
that's it, you know, it wasn't like masses. Yeah, then afterwards there were really important bands which reached to a lot a big masses. Uh, but but the beginning of the whole thing was started with around a hundred person. And my brother was one of them. Uh, and, and, and basically these little kids, they just wanted to form something true by expressing themselves. But it wasn't about any drugs, because there was no even drugs, there was no even like a, a alcohol mm -hmm. to drink. This was just about music, but more importantly, to express your inner feelings in an outward way it, and, 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 and to reach the extreme levels of, of, of aggression. Because when you are living as a little kid, it's always oppressed by the society and especially the conservative people in Istanbul. But the conservatism don't think uh, in a way that like, mm, like the, the normal liberal people even in the street, they can be conservative. It's not just like a racist people all over the towards to you. It's the mentality of that you cannot do things in Istanbul. And when you're a little kid, you are hearing Nirvana and grunge, and it's the beginning of heavy metal music, trash metal music, and they were talking about like riffs, doing things, expressing yourself, you become like an atomic bomb afterwards. And they were one of the first ones to, to, to answer the call, you know? Yeah. And when, I, me as a spectator, when I watched the movie, yeah. Uh, I know it's like, so you you based it in the, the in the nineties, but I felt it like it's in our days. Thank you. It was what was it was, was it intentional or it was an interesting thing the way you are pointing out because it was intentional. The reason why I do it that way is that I wanted to create a, a timeless movie. Uh, uh, it's about nineties, however. The whole story is actually reflecting things towards to now too. Uh, my, my brother were growing up, they were always dreaming up, li dreaming about leaving Istanbul. Mm. That was like their biggest mission in life. Like we have to leave Turkey and Istanbul. And strangely, when I grew up, that was the main thing in my field too. And now I'm almost 30 years old. Almost all my friends in Istanbul speaking this thing too. I'm not against of traveling. I travel too. I live in Paris. I live in London. I love traveling. That's my biggest mission in life, to see different cultures. However, what I was seeing is that like this idea of fetish fetishization of a land that doesn't even exist and just to going there. You know, just leaving the city for the sake of living. Like, it's this kind of like weird atmosphere going on, especially in my friends. And I just wanted to point out this feeling and to make a film about this, you know. Okay, go, leave, but where are we going? Do you think is there a place that's going to save us? Uh, <laughs> out this way because I mean you can speak about your own country I can speak my own country these are the issues that no one is speaking and, and, and especially the older generation that's supposed to change these things they are not doing what they have to be doing so and also in the cinema wise too my biggest problem was with the Turkish cinema was that there is n not so many people speaking contemporary issues. They speak about village stories. I don't know if you're familiar with the Turkish cinema. There's a very interesting pattern going on in the, in the last 10, 15 years, where most of the serious movies that is being made in Turkey is more than 80% of them is, takes place in villages. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, in Turkey, there is no more village anymore, believe me. Like, if, if I want to make a movie, 
in Turkey right now in terms of a village, I will show that there's no village anymore. But this, this problem is going on, so I wanted to make this movie to point out these contemporary issues going on with the young kids, young people, especially the city life. And, and so Istanbul is one of the most cosmopolitan and most mega cities in, one of, in the world. But why these young kids are, can't find a voice in this me, me, like mega city? It doesn't make sense, right? Because they have to find their voice uh, in this kind of like a big city, you know? But, but they can't. So the problem is, is in the mind. The biggest problem we are facing, especially the young people like us, is that like we feel that we are in a prison of a geography, but this is actually in our minds. And the older generation that's supposed to free our minds by being mentors to us, they're not doing their work. So we have to become our mentors right now. And, and, and the way you are pointing out was a real touching because last night a lot of Bulgarian kids and young people came to me and speak to me that like move I don't have a relation with punk I'm not a punk guy I'm never into this kind of stuff but I have a connection with your whole story so it, it was really touching for me to hear that you know it was important yeah because in somehow Arandite means in, in between. between so it's in between the places like yeah. he wants to live he wants to say but it's also in yeah. between the generations exactly and it be, it always in between. So, uh, in Istanbul, geographically, is a very interesting city. It's one of the only city in the planet that is being actually uh, spread into two continents. So, it has the European side and it has the Asian side. But this is not a, just the geography, but the mindset also. It's so hard to define Istanbul. And, the, and especially the Turkish people who are living in Istanbul. So I wanted to make a film about this untangible situation that is going on. That is neither this nor that. And, and, and this has a character too. You know, being in between things. This itself is a character too. Because right now, especially uh, with the globalism, now we understand that uh, having two opposite direction and having the two opposite mental state in the, in the one form is a power, it's a sensibility, you know? It, it means that you have an understanding of both sides. But the problem that what I was facing in Istanbul and with, with my generation is that like, we don't see this situation as a power. We were always seeing this as a, a bad thing, you know, like a lack of character thing. I think this is actually a very, very interesting thing if, if we start to see it this, in this direction. Mm -hmm.